CPI has come in the best it has in four years this morning, causing quite the rally. We've also got some more economic data coming out later today in the form of the FOMC meeting. Bitcoin is taking off. The miners are taking everything is taking off. We're going to take a look at that. There's also something extremely interesting happening on the IWM or Russell 2000 chart. Let's we, we've got so much to cover today. Let's get right into it. And before we get going, don't forget to check out the Trade Cave store available now on Etsy. We've got a couple of products on there. We've got our four t-shirts. We've got a sticker up there. Now go ahead and check that out. So we've got the CPI numbers here. You can see that the CPI CPI month over month was uh, was zero versus 0.3 expected. Uh, you've also got the uh, year over year was 3.3 versus 3.4 expected. That's pretty fantastic. U.S. core CPI also came out. That was 0.2% versus 0.3% for the month over month. And the year over year was 3.4 versus uh, actual versus 3.6 expected. This is one of the best CPI reads we've had in a while and will definitely be something that the Fed has to answer a lot of questions about today. It might send us flying up even higher. Um, as you can see here later today, 2 p.m. Eastern time, we have the FOMC interest rate decision. And then at 2.30, Jerome Powell will be addressing the public at the press conference. And that is when the fireworks begin. So be aware of that. That's 2.30 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S. Um, keep that on your calendar and be aware. Uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is back up. It's almost up to $70,000 again. Uh, it's pretty suspicious that the day before and days leading into the best CPI report in four years, we get a whole bunch of levered longs get liquidated on a stop loss hunt. It's almost like somebody knew exactly what was going to happen today. Uh, that's that doesn't that doesn't smell like manipulation at all. Uh, anyways, we're almost back up to $70,000. I'm a happy camper here. My longs, my leverage on BitX, because I still I'm still holding my calls on BitX, by the way, they went down pretty bad yesterday. And we came up today and they're doing quite well today. I really want to see it get above this white line. That's where I entered. Red was supposed to be my stop loss area. But I just had this really strong feeling that today was going to be a heck of a lot better than yesterday. So I held through yesterday. Um, and it is almost back up to my break even cost. My aim here is at 49.80 on my green line there. That's where I'll probably be taking my exit on that call option. Uh, but that's what's going on there with that. Um, that's doing better. Bitcoin's doing better. Let's take a look at Bitfarms. Bitfarms also had a nice big gap up this morning. We bounced off the 20 day. We hit the five day and stopped though. I don't like that. I really wish we had gone past the five day. That would have given me a lot more confidence. If we can conquer that here today or by the end of the week, the five day moving average, I'll be feeling a lot better about this move. But this is kind of exactly what I was looking at and why I cautioned patience uh, yesterday with Bitfarms when it was falling down to the 20. Um, uh, there was one commenter that specifically asked about it. And, and I mentioned, hey, you know, price on the daily is coming down. It's hitting the 20 and bouncing up. I might want to wait and see if it's going to break that or come back up higher or not. And it looks like waiting was the right decision. Uh, as it did not break the 20 and it did bounce right back up to the five. It does need to conquer the five. Otherwise, it will find its way back down to the 20 before long. So that is important. Um, this this whole poison pill saga is still unraveling. Now we're going to see what happens here. There is precedent for this to cause a pretty significant squeeze. And there's a nice uh, historical story in involving an automaker, uh, you know, almost 20 years ago in a similar situation. Now, some key factors were different, but it is interesting how that played out. And I would like to make a video at some point here in the next week or two going over that. So if you can guess what it is, let me know in the comments what you think I'm going to talk about there. Let's take a look at some other miners. Bit Digital. Bit Digital is up 3.76%. We are back up to 275 on this thing. We're out of this little descending channel here. In fact, I'm going to get rid of this because I'm going to say that's done now. We're over the five day. I want to see it come back up to the top of the range here at 290. I want to see it conquer three dollars real, real soon. That would be fantastic for Bit Digital. Uh, we've seen other um, other miners that were partaking in the um, AI business getting lots of love in the last few days. Let's see Bit Digital get some of that as well. I mean, it has been getting it since April, but let's see it get some more of it because they they've been it for a while. They've been doing really well with it. Let's see them get some love from that. Let's take a look at CleanSpark. How's CleanSpark doing today? CleanSpark is only up 2.7%. Uh, 
I don't love that. I wish it was up a little bit more, but man, this dip right here, all the way down to 1424 and then started crawling back up. What a wick. I do like that big long wick on the bottom. That does give me a lot of confidence. I need to see it. See, see how price hit the 20 day moving average and then just reject it immediately off of it. We need to see it conquer that 20 day moving average at 1685. That's it. That's the key to going higher. That's the key out of this downtrend that's been happening since May 22nd. We have to get above that 20 day and hold it and hold it for a couple of days, not just like back here where it sliced up, held it for two days and then fell right back down. This thing has to sustain a move. We need a weekly that covers, that closes above this and then opens the next week over it. I'm tired of this crap. I want to see it go over the 20 and hold. Stop it. Stop failing there. All right. Anyways, that's my little rant for the day. Uh, let's move on to Mara. Mara is up 1.77%. Mara has also been a little bit disappointing lately in terms of its movements. It also came off the five, hit the 20, rejected off the 20, and is hanging out just below it. Again, that's kind of annoying. I really need to see it conquer the 20. And on Mar in Mara's case, I really need to see it get over $22.77. Once it's over $22.77, then it starts opening itself up towards that $30 mark again. And until I see that, I'm going to be just waiting uh, for 22 to get conquered by Marathon Digital. Let's take a look at Riot now. How is Riot doing this morning? Riot up 2.4%. Also a little bit disappointing in terms of its performance. It didn't hit any SMAs or anything. Just kind of went up to the top of this descending channel I've got here and then and then tapped it and <laughs> fell right back down to the 20-day moving average. Interesting how TA works out that way. Uh, <laughs> I love channels. Channels are fantastic. Yeah, it's, it, it just needs to hold above the 20 and the 50 right now. And then we have a, uh, the opportunity to move up towards the 200 on Riot, which is currently sitting at 1169 and price is currently just hovering above the 20 and the 50 at $10.15 there. Uh, and, and as long as we can hold above that, then we have a chance of going at 1169, which is where I expect us to find some trouble on Riot. Uh, let's see here. What about Iron? How's Iron doing today? Iron finally, it's still up 2.83%. Again, it's up to 1270. This thing will not stop. Look how far away it is from the five day moving average. The five day moving average is all the way down at $11.13. That is so far below current prices. That is a little concerning. I really want to see it come back down and, and tap the five. If, if it's going to use the 5S support, that's great. As long as it doesn't break it, I'd be feeling that move as if the 5 can continue to support it as uh, on its way up. But wow, is it far away from 5-day moving average right now and in overbought uh, territory uh, with a bit of an RSI divergence. So I would be looking for this. Honestly, I wouldn't be super interested right now. I'm not chasing this thing. I'd be looking for it to come back to about $10.20 now that it's taken off so far. So let me move this up now about around, around this area preferably down here at $8 is where I'd be looking at between ten twenty and $8 is where I'd be looking uh, to pick up iron on the way down uh, before it does its next surge. Assuming it doesn't just keep flying off into the stratosphere. Uh, I mean, if you're in this thing, congratulations. If you're not in this thing, uh, I would recommend not catching FOMO. Now, of course, this is not financial advice and not a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any asset whatsoever. Be aware of FOMO and how it affects you and don't fall victim to FOMO. All right, let's look at Core Z. How is Core Z going? Oh my, look at Core Z. Core Z is, is even more insane than Iron. <laughs> this thing, these things, I don't know when they're going to stop, but I promise you the moment I get FOMO and buy them is exactly when they'll stop and turn around. That's why I'm not buying them. Uh, this thing is just absolutely running away. Uh, I really need to see it come back and test that $6.11 mark. Uh, to feel like this move could be sustained. Uh, like usually price doesn't just take off and not retest previous highs. The previous high was at $6.11. I would really want to see price come back and touch that before I'd be interested. Uh, otherwise, it's just a runaway freight train and that's just dangerous for everybody, uh, except for those who are currently in that stock. Wow, if you're in it, you're doing just fantastic. If you're not in it, again, be aware of FOMO and how it affects you and uh, you know don't fall victim to that. Uh, what's the next one? Let's see Cypher. I haven't looked at Cypher in quite a while. How is Cypher doing today? Cypher is actually up 8% today. What about the warrants? Warrants are actually also up 7%. So they're up 7 cents today. Doing okay. I really want to see them just launch. That would be pretty nice and fantastic. Uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves though. These, these, we'll, we'll see how the FOMC <laughs> plays out on it. Uh, so let's take a look now at treasuries. I haven't talked about treasuries in a while. And something very interesting is going on with treasuries. We got a really good CPI print. All right, great. 
I go on to the weekly, and we know how CPI softening is really good for treasuries. But you can see that we're breaking out of my falling wedge here. We've been out of it for two weeks now. That is really good. We can hold here above the 20 week moving average. We can find ourselves quickly moving up to $54. We move quickly up to $54 here. That takes us above the 200 day moving average at $52 and two cents. Above the, the 200 day moving average, I am very interested in TMF. This could be what I've been waiting for, which is the rate cuts to come through and having such a good CPI print. We get this next month as well before the July meeting. Ooh, I could be looking at a rate cut in July and a rate cut in July would see this thing not just moving up 4%, but moving up in double digits really, really fast. Uh, so TMF, the trade might be on the table coming up soon. If you've had patience on this thing, congratulations. It looks like we might be looking at a time where entering could make sense. And we're also not that far off the bottom. The bottom was down here at 38. We're only at 51. We're really not that far away, especially considering that the next stop up is at $75 and above that, it is at $96. And the ultimate spot I'm looking to reach is about $122 sometime in the 12 months after the rate cuts begin. And it sounds like they are on the table. Potentially, we could be sniffing out a rate cut incoming very, very soon. Now, of course, this is not something to front run unless you have tons of patience. If you're not super, super patient, don't front run this thing. Of course, it's not financial advice and not a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any asset whatsoever. Just a caution, a caution in terms of front running ideas because then you could, if you front ran this thing over here when it first crossed the 200 and it was at $67 back in December 2023, you'd be holding a pretty <laughs> terrible bag right now. Um, so that's why I don't front run. I need to see it cross over the 200 come back, back test it, and hold above the 200-day moving average. And then I'd be super, super interested in bonds again. And they are going to be, at one point in the next two years or so, they're going to be a fantastic trade. And I'm just waiting, salivating, looking for this thing to make the move I need it to make in order to enter a position on it. Uh, the other thing, super interesting, IWM. Notice how it has been just absolutely ranging between 210 and 200 dollars. We were, we've come up to 210 and gone back down to 200, uh, what, one, two, three times now in just the last, what, and just since February, three times since February. That's crazy. Um, we touched 210 back here on May 15th. And then yesterday we were at 200. Now we're at 206 with this good CPI read. This is also IWM or the Russell 2000 also plays significantly well off of a good CPI read and off of a, a dovish Fed, which we are now coming to expect. This could be the time that we actually break 210. If we break 210, I'm actually pretty interested in IWM because 210 has been a ceiling for quite a while. And if we can conquer that ceiling, the next move up afterwards, let me turn off these fibs, they're kind of hard to look at right now. The next move after that, after 210, once we get up here, is up to 220, right? 220, 221, where we get into this, uh, we start entering into this resistance here from the previous top. We conquer 220, we could potentially run for the all-time high over here at 244. And once we get out there, we're in price discovery. Things are amazing. But anyways, that's a huge move up from where we currently are. So 210 to 240 is the potential move uh, I don't know if it'll do that whole move on the back half of 2024, but I could absolutely see it getting into the 220s by the back half of 2024. Uh, anyways, that's all I've got for you today. It's going to be a fantastic day. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, share this video, and have a profitable day.